Hi, Bev. Hey, Bev. Dear Kiki. Dear Kiki. Red Fox to you. Desperate Housewives. Pino Grigio. Doesn't want to marry you. Love you like I love you. Don't talk to yourself. Cheers, Bev. Cheers. Cheers. Ill advised. This is ill advised. Hi, Biff. Hello. Hello, and welcome. Oh, welcome to Ill Advice. The podcast where two best friends tell you what to do when someone else should have been the end point. Like your old bartender. And not his podiatrist. The fuck is a podiatrist? A foot doctor. Okay. Well, did you think about bartender before you said it? Yeah. Well, no. I... No. Kind of, but not the way you're asking. I just, podiatrist was what worked said in my mind. when somebody should end it or whatever. Like when somebody tells you. What, like you should have been, that's the advice, why are you here? Like, <laughs> no, I shut you off seven shots ago. Why are you back at my bar? Because I'm And that's why you have a new bartender, because <laughs> the new one doesn't tell you that yet. Right. My point exactly. Stick to your PCP, ladies right. and gentlemen. That's why I didn't know how to answer your question because I was like, I got, technically thought about it before it came out. Oh, no, I did not. But it wasn't like a premeditated, like, this is what I'm going to say. I see. Right, Yours so. was relevant. Mine was like a shum, 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 and yep. we got here. Yeah. yeah. Mine was a, I just didn't plan this. This was what popped in my brain. Yep. Feet. Which was usually you love we, feet. I love feet so much. So much. Like no, I don't toes. hate feet. Feet are just feet to me. They're just, they're a part of the body. Do you like rub your boyfriend's feet after a if, long day? He won't let me, but if he asked me, I would. Oh, okay. And I would let people rub my feet. Even oh, though I, I don't thought like you were feet. like a, don't touch my feet. No. I won't touch yours. No. I just, rub I think feet else. are a part of a body. They, I don't want to lick them. <laughs> and if you put your, oh, I, I told you about that time, right? That one hookup fucking sucked my big toe. <laughs> And I almost wore his skull as a fucking shoe. <laughs> I vaguely remember, yeah. Oh, oh, he hit me up years <laughs> later and I just didn't respond. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. No, I'm all set. I had an ex that also liked my feet. Did you mind it? No. I have a wet foot thing. That's my thing. He used my feet as a sleeve. I have high arches. <laughs> and he. And so when I put my feet together, considerable girth. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So. You're welcome, Pops. He also sucked my toes and whatever. And it wasn't, it didn't do anything for me, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like off putting or And anything. you were like, it did something for him. So, like, I'm good. Yeah, like, go ahead, suck away. Yeah, no. This guy put his, my big toe on his tongue. And it was, I don't know if it was because I have an aversion to wet to feet. Wet feet. Yes. Yeah. Like, I don't, the word, the, Worst thing that can happen is if I'm wearing socks and someone didn't clean and up like an ice cube in. that melted and yeah. then I'm like, or like on the dog floor. Or like dog lapped water everywhere. And, and I just, just, oh, that's yes. the worst. Yes, I agree. And then my sock soaks it up and I'm like, great, my life's ruined. That feeling. Yeah. And then you take like, your sock this off. This is a metaphor for life, people, wet. if you're not following. <laughs> but then like if you're barefoot and just step in something that splashes on your leg, <laughs> that's even worse. But I think the sock wins for me personally. I was going to say, I don't think that's worse. I think the wet sock is worse. Yeah. Either way, the wet foot thing, unless I'm prepared like a beach or a pool, it's not going to ever win. And clearly, if you don't tell me that, hey, I want to suck your toe when you're telling me you want to suck my I was my... just going to ask you that question. What no. if it was like a, hey, babe, I'm feeling a little. No. <laughs> not even a heads no. up. Like, nope. watch out for that puddle. Nope. Nope. Mm, all right. Because to me, that's not the same as walking on a beach mm. or a pool. Because there is water there, and I know that. I'm going to get in to all of it, not just my. I'm feet. too distracted by sunshine. Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, and like, hey, I'm going to a beach. I'm supposed to get wet there. If I wanted to get wet in bed, I'd just let someone piss on me. Do you have boring sex? No, I do I not. Know, I, I nope, know. that is not true. I, I know, but sex is supposed to be wet and messy. That's why it's like, okay. sure, well, you, you know want to shove I, my fuck. feet in your throat, go ahead. <laughs> like, no. Let's do it. I mean, it's wet and messy in other ways, again, because that's supposed to happen for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, you win. But a toe, like, 
I just remember it going in slow motion, like him being like, look, like he's going down on me and he's look, making Did eye contact. Did it sexually? Yes. And he's making, and I'm like, yes. And like then he like does the like. Well, no, like he's like, you know, fucking. Working his way down. Yeah. And he's just like, look at my throat. And I'm like, I can't. I'm too busy watching my dick disappear. And then he's like making eye contact. I'm like, yeah, you know, like all erotic and gross <laughs> making this face. <laughs> I that hope I will everyone publish can see for it. everyone. Yes. <laughs> and then and then like him going down and kissing the inside of my legs. And I'm like, yep, that's right. Erogenous zone city. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, my We're knees at are the fine. Ankles. We're, my knees okay. <laughs> ankles. I'm like, that's a bone. And sh- I mean, if you think you're worshiping me and that gets you off, fine. And then in slow motion, it was like, no. <laughs> Like the Did bounty he commercials. The first? <laughs> no, it was like the Just bounty worst. commercials when yes. you see the drink spill. Yeah, and everyone's like, oh. and I'm over here begging for a paper towel. You're trying to. <laughs> That's great. And then I see my toe get on the tongue, and I just felt this spongy, moist regret. Warm. Ugh. And then he, I felt suction. Uh. Yeah. And that day, little part of my soul died. You were single the next morning? I mean, I was single the whole time. He was just some fun in my... Oh, great. So there was more that you did not disclose to your best friend? You knew that I was. I had years. like a 30-minute slut phase. Mm-hmm. That was part of it. There were others I don't remember. Was this a married guy or not? No. Then I don't know who He was, was. only in the driveway. No time. And the one time Toes. inside. <laughs> I can skip that part. Are we done now? Yes. Are we done ridiculing me? Nobody's ridiculing you. You're right. You're not. I'm just giving myself away. I was going to say, you're flustering yourself. We don't even know how we're doing yet. <laughs> Do we need to? I think we should. We how just, are you? We're talking about we've only, foot pussies. We've and, been... <laughs> <laughs> and tumbling. Like, Do we have to? Can we just skip to can the you live? you never say that again? I'm so grossed out right now. <laughs> Can you never? You know what, Biff? How are you? How are you? Great. Yeah. I'm great. Good. Doing good. Great. Are you thirsty? How are you? I'm parched. <laughs> I'm a little parched too. Super parched. Let's drink. You know, I had something to talk about, but now I can't. What was it? Nothing. It was just talking about the crossroads in my life. But you know, we'll Who needs save them that when for- you have. Don't say it again. It's over. This week's wine is a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. I'm so excited for it. Everybody knows I love a New Zealand Sauvignon. This is called Rapora Springs 2022. Each bottle of Rapora Springs tells a story of a lifetime in Marlboro, of water, wine, and of generations of family working with nature. The journey, I'm sorry, I'm just picturing water, a bunch of new wine and and, and Jesus. <laughs> I was thinking like In a whole... In Marlboro, Massachusetts. No. <laughs> I was thinking about a whole family of nudists stomping on wines, <laughs> and I don't know why. Awkward. <laughs> okay, great. Mom, look what I can do. <laughs> the journey of our wine begins far from our vineyards. Great. What did I say? <laughs> Starts at birth. Pure, pure water from the snow-capped Southern Alps travels six months through braided rivers and underground aquifers to emerge crystal clear at the Rapura Springs that run through our home vineyard. This quintessential Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc is packed full of fresh passion fruit, mm. tropical and citrus flavors. Rapura Springs. I'm excited. Drink responsibly. I love woods water. Woods water? Yeah. I was thinking mountain water. I was trying to go That to ran sleep. through the woods for six months before it reached that's true i suppose you have to go oh, it through smells woods. great oh it does it smells i'm gonna be so sad if it doesn't if taste as good. good as it smells let's find out Cheers. there's a citrus oh i got the passion fruit me too and the citrus yeah you got the citrus or citrus got in your eye huh. <laughs> first impressions it's really good it's sour yeah it's very tart second one there's something about it that doesn't say Sauvignon to me. I didn't scrunch. You didn't. It's a little bitter. I was going to say it's less sweet than the first sip. Oh, you got sweet on the first sip. Mm-hmm. I didn't get any sweetness. I got like all the sweet passion fruit with like 
someone squeezed a lemon in my mouth at the same time. Oh, a true adult star. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Number three, please. What? Don't look at me like that. I just I'm not helping you realize so this dream. Many, <laughs> we wouldn't be sitting on this big brown couch. <laughs> okay, drink it. Now I'm getting Sauvignon. I love it. I think it's wonderful. This is like a perfect 80 degrees outside. We're sitting next to the pool. Mm-hmm. We're drinking it in the Sun, pool. So, yep. Yep. It's still nice and cold. Sun's out, Sauvignon out. But like a summer Sauvignon. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually don't think I ever would have separated those, but now I can. Hmm. We're going to have to remember this one. Brokora. Great. <laughs> All the other ones we didn't remember that we loved. <laughs> I know. We've never re purchased uh there was one we repurchased that french intentionally though yeah oh okay yeah we got it a couple times oh yeah or did we record with it because we got it a couple times that might be more accurate rating honestly i'm gonna say a five i'm gonna say a five also five it is absolutely you have questions this week (laughs) questions you can ask them this week Whenever Beth returns to this podcast. I'm here waiting for you to you finish your sentence. You were not here. I was staring at the time. No, you were not. I sure was. No, you were not. At first I was thinking Reese's Cups, Reese's Cups. But then I was like, that's not the real because thing. Because you were not then, staring at the time. And then I looked down at the time and I was staring at the time. <gasps> that's why I was caught on to whatever Biff returns. Yeah, I was waiting for you to look at me like, why are you I'm talking? waiting for you to shut the, f- or open your mouth. Just talk about the fucking questions it's so mean the tv's on so it's so mean. we need to start turning this shit off so shut it off so that you you're don't the one who had this the is remote. your fault you know you made me do this you're the one who shut the sound <laughs> off and not the tv that's because that's what you do so i thought that that's what you liked sorry for paying attention to your needs okay well now we're gonna pay attention to yours so the tv needs to be turned <laughs> off <laughs> this is equity my friends this is what a relationship should be. <laughs> fucking amen. We didn't survive this long for no fucking reason. I think it's because we were never romantically involved, and that's the key to it. Debatable. Well, someone needs to test our theory. Can't be us. Yeah, I'll be damned. <laughs> we go fucking 20-something years. You'll be damned. Vagina, I'll be damned. No, I mean, our friendship getting oh. ruined. <laughs> the fuck i okay. still didn't think about wow can you hurry up this is you express <laughs> <laughs> this is dear abby classic my abigail mm-hmm. abigail <laughs> i was gonna say delete that abigail for bad <laughs> don't delete it okay well <laughs> uh, this is from <laughs> march 2024 not abigail finn buren no no okay just checking oh no, it was whatever you said <laughs> Daughter's open marriage reveal gives parent pause. Oh. Oh. Mm. What would I do if Wyatt said he had an open marriage? I don't know. I'm still trying to get Wyatt to leave the house. So one step at a time. You? I have a little girl, so it's different. It sure is. It's like yeah, there's more than one man. I know. How do you tell when? You? Right, uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. So you're thinking societally. Okay, I got it. I don't want multiple women touching my son. <laughs> but like, that's the reality. You know what? Read the question. Okay. Yeah, thank you. This is where I'm stuck. Yeah. Dear Abby, my daughter and her husband have been together for 10 years, married for three. They have a one-year-old daughter. I have just learned they may be getting a divorce. My son-in-law is very controlling as well as verbally and emotionally abusive. He yells, swears, and slams doors over the littlest of things. It has been going on for the past couple of years. My daughter deserves to be happy, and she doesn't want to raise my granddaughter in that environment. However, she just confided to me that they have been in an open marriage for the last three months. Both have other people in their lives. I'm having a hard time processing this. I come from the generation where that kind of thing is morally wrong, and I'm heartbroken about the whole thing. I love my daughter and want to support her, but if I don't, I risk losing her and my granddaughter forever. How can I cope? Completely thrown in Ohio. How do you cope? Is that the question? I'm sorry. 
The yes. Ohio threw me off, but also the question. I love my daughter and I want to support her, but if I don't, I risk losing her and my granddaughter forever. How can I cope? So they're getting a divorce and you want to support, they might be getting a divorce and you're trying to support your daughter through her open marriage. I think there's some skewed priorities here. The biggest thing here is the uh, verbally and emotionally abusive part. Right. So your daughters might be going through a divorce, but you're focused on her open marriage. That she, yeah, she has another partner. Can I actually, let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go to the open marriage. When they have other people in their lives, to me, an open marriage is like, we're not making relationships outside of this. We're having relations outside of this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, we're not making something meaningful. We're just having fun. Okay. Meaningful is under our roof. Right. So, to me, let me, I feel like I need to, either they have other people in their lives or. So, I only have something to say about that because, um. An actual cousin of mine mm-hmm. was in an open marriage, and they both had actual partners. Like, they were married together, but, like, he had another girlfriend, and his wife had a actual, like, another boyfriend. Like, it was, like, actual relationships. Not Does that just, make like, them poly, or what is the rule here? Good question. Can we have them on? No, they're divorced and hate each other now. Ah, uh, can we have one of them Matter of fact, on? they're now in committed relationships with the boyfriend and Okay, girlfriend. so let me go back to my question. <laughs> when you're open, I don't I don't I think it just depends on but yeah, your I guess rules. Your dynamic. The, that's the true. Marriage rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sure, go bang whoever you want, but that's it. Yeah, that's true. Or okay. well, they made homes with their significant significant others. <laughs> Anyways, her question is not about... Right. How do I support my daughter? Also, I'm just, I'm super confused. Mm -hmm. It went from talking about they've been together for 10 years. He's super abusive. They may be getting a divorce. He yells and swears and slams doors. My daughter deserves to be happy. Doesn't want to raise my granddaughter in that environment. However, she just told me that they've been in an open marriage for the last three months. Like... I'm having a hard time processing this. Not the end of my daughter's marriage. With an abusive with man. With an abusive man. Who is doing this stuff in front of my granddaughter. That's me thinking like mom has some skewed priorities here. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. But it's like, like, which part are you trying to cope with? Right. The fact that she's sleeping with another man. Mm-hmm. Is that relevant to the marriage? Right. Like I don't. How do I support my daughter when I don't agree? Maybe that's actually in agreeing with you, I'm also painting the picture of a little bit of understanding. I don't agree with any of this. What do I do? Uh, yeah, like, I think this is the downfall of their marriage. But am I supposed to say anything? Should I keep my mouth shut? How do I support my daughter going through this when I think she did it wrong? It's like you set yourself up for failure? Yeah, kind of like that. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe that's the approach we take. Sure, let's do that. Because that's that empathetic. Hurts my- brain way less <laughs> okay great just, i'm just i'm just trying to meet people where they're much. at perhaps yeah no beautiful perhaps yeah i think there's a lot of assumptions going on i think we're gonna do exactly that okay great so how do i Beth, help my daughter how does she cope how do i cope how can through I my cope? daughter's bullshit she's worried about if i don't support my daughter mm. i risk losing her and my granddaughter well, do you want to support your daughter or nurse your conscious? You choose. Mm. Are you supporting your daughter through this turmoil and this hard part of her life, regardless of how you feel about the way that they handled their marriage? Because let's say he was a saint and she wanted a divorce because she wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. How do you support your daughter knowing that this guy was everything that you ever hoped for her? You know what I mean? It's not about that person. It Yeah, it should be more easy to support your daughter when it's like... Thank God you're leaving this abusive relationship. Exactly. And you're. I think you're putting the emphasis on something that's irrelevant. I think your daughter having an open marriage, though the fact, is not a factor in how you approach your daughter. Yeah. Um, how do you support your daughter? How do you cope? You cope by remembering that you're helping your daughter out of a very uneasy situation, that you're actually feeling for her emotional, physical safety. And a... The child involved and the too. child that's, like that's a, exposed to all mm-hmm. of this. And if you don't agree with all of that, all the more reason 
so that your right. fucking grandchild doesn't have. Yeah. I just said that like a fucking terrible human, but I don't care. Like your fucking grandchild's gonna be exposed to that. Like fucking wake up, dude. Yeah. That's how do you cope by minding your own fucking business? <laughs> You're a parent. <laughs> I know. I know. This is why it's easy for me to say what I'm saying you from can't my mind lofty your own perch. Fucking business. No, you can't. That is my business. I know. They came out of my business. I'm but, minding but them for the rest of no, their lives. That's well, I guess from your perspective, like what I'm saying is like, yes, my business is your safety and your happiness. No, I'm like, I'm agreeing with yeah. you, but how do you do that? How do you like I'm watching you drive 75 miles an hour into a tree without your mm-hmm. seatbelt on? Right. How do I just Okay, honey, well, I'll be here. I would argue you drove 75 miles an hour without your seatbelt. Now I have to save you. Because it already happened. Their relationship was open. You have no control over that. And now it's ending. Right. How do I save you now that you've already driven into that tree? How do I cope with watching this? Mm-hmm. And by, you're my child. By knowing that you can change the trajectory of the future, that you have influence over the trajectory of the future, simply by getting her out of the bad situation she's in. I like that. What she does after that is her business. She is an adult. Yes, you are going to have opinions and thoughts, and she could choose to share those with you. But as long as she's happy, healthy, and well, that should be your focus. Period. Meet her where she's at. That's our job as parents. Yeah, I love that. I'm also, obviously, it's so much more easier said than done. Yeah. It's easy for me. I'm just like, I'm waiting of, for like, my what kid to do I something. Need to, like, what would I actually genuinely, like, okay, let me take a deep breath and just, like, Accept this situation. You know what I mean? Yeah, you and I are when in this like, unique position. Oh, like, We're that's aware. My fucking child. Like, uh. right now, I'll yell at you later about this open relationship shit. Let me get you out of this abusive relationship, yeah. this abusive marriage. Oh, for sure. And then we'll talk. Like, that's what I mean. Like, your priorities are skewed. Like, this is what I'm yeah, I definitely, to fight first. Yeah, I definitely don't love how they presented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The situation. Yeah, I think it's it's all it's just super judgmental. Like that, like you list off a bunch of shitty shit, and then it's like, but my biggest concern is that. Right. And then <laughs> the, think about it from the daughter's perspective. Like, mom, who gives a fuck about what led to the end of my marriage, or what you think led to the end of my marriage, or who gives a fuck about how we thought we would be happy? I need your help. Yes or no. I think think about your daughter's well-being. Think less about how she handles her love life. Think about how she's going to make it to the next phase in her life. I'm just going to go with mom's probably so overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. A, my daughter has been in this abusive relationship for so long. And then she's finally divorcing. Mm -hmm. And then, but wait, there's more. (laughs) Is this like an infomercial? (laughs) Yes. So maybe that's kind of mom's just conveying it oddly because that's like the newest information like the latest bomb for me it almost feels like mom wants to make it more dramatic by being like she's getting a divorce but i can't i can't overlook this thing that jesus was just not okay with however that's how she however she just confided to me that they've been in an open marriage for the last three months and both have other people in their lives mom she trusts you and wants you in her life (laughs) that's it she, you mean something to her. Uh, yeah. Do not undo that. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think that's my response too. It's like you cope by allowing your daughter to be a human, come to you with any and yeah. everything without knowing that mom's not going to love this. I'm sure yeah. she knows mom's not going to love this. Yeah. But, but that's not mom's. Mom, here's where we're at. Yeah. I'm thinking about my response is considering you and I, you know, we've, I would say, within the last few years or just before that have come to the concept of open relationships and like, okay, they exist. And then just being like, okay, they exist, but not for us. And it's like, not what we, and and I'll be damned if they, it changes, but maybe one day it might. Not for for me. But where we are right now, we're thinking like, no, like for us, it doesn't work. But if it works for (laughs) you. Right. If it works for your right. relationship. Although the more questions we get like this, I'm like, does it work? <laughs> right. <laughs> but maybe that's, you know, we only get those questions because it, it's, it's not, not working. working in that situation. Right. But I'm considering that in my response too. Like, 
I know that I'm not totally on board because I don't always understand open relationships. But I also know that it's true for people and people want to live this way and and that it may work for some people in the world. And, and in this instance, it just didn't. Mm-hmm. And that's like any other relationship. Okay. Right. Yeah. Tangent, but you get it. No, I agree. I could keep going. So let's read the answer. Yeah, I'm done. Dear Throne, your daughter and son-in-law's open marriage will soon be over. Hallelujah. While you may not approve of your daughter's sexual activity, she's an adult and has a right to live her life as she sees fit. She may have been pressured into trying it. The Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged. Mm. I strongly recommend you try to remember and follow that dictate if you want to continue to have a relationship with your daughter and grandchild. She may need all the emotional support she can get. Hmm. That's it? Mm Mm-hmm. Thus, we want to view comments. No, I don't have time to fight with people. (laughs) 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 No, I uh, I like the response. It was a lot shorter than ours, and got to the point. I do want to point out that her quoted, not quoted, parenthesized open marriage will soon be over. Hallelujah! Yeah, I think she's like reminding mom that like there's other. Things to be concerned right. about. Agreed. But she didn't. Like what? This is the worst. Judge of it? not, Let's lest go. ye be judged. Right. And, and I'm done with this response. And after you were judged <laughs> and you've left, <laughs> then perhaps it's best to. Next question. Next question. <laughs> March second, twenty twenty four. Series of unfortunate events. Puts friendship in question. Damn. Ooh, looking at you, Beth. I wonder what would be a- the series of unfortunate events for us that would put our friendship in question, given how far we've come since we've questioned our friendship. <laughs> I, think- <laughs> I think you know that answer. Do you? Yeah. Or do I, rather? We do. We well, do. apparently you do. We do. We do? Mm. I thought that's what we would say what to my boyfriend. What am I boyfriends. yelling at you weekly about? Oh, you just decided to not fucking tell me that or wait until we are goddamn recording? Oh, I thought it was going to be about, like, You banged. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Wait, when did I fucking bang him? No! Did you just accuse me on no, air? No, I'm saying... <laughs> I was thinking also, like, what situation? <laughs> but like, I still would be your friend. Biff, I'd be like, hey. I'd be like, you didn't fucking even record it, did you? Yeah, exactly. Because I'd be asshole. like, Biff. Now I, you understand. I meant, I meant to tell you that Matthew sent me a picture of his dick, but when I talked to him, they we did it. slipped and <laughs> I, fell on we, it. We and slipped stuff. in each other. and Now I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I might do it if you had his baby, maybe. No way. No way. With my luck, it'd be my heavy flow day. Mm. According to him, all you have to do is pee after sex and you won't get pregnant no more. <laughs> I hope he's not listening. <laughs> Poor thing. He That's has twins, I by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Whoops. Somebody didn't go pee long enough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you hold your pee. Forget kidney disease. Ah, dear Abby. <laughs> My friend of eight years, quote, Lorna, out of all the names, she, their friendship's done. Well, apparently it is. My friend of eight years, Lorna, had a family get-together for her daughter, who was graduating from college. I was not invited, which surprised me, since our families were always close. Mm. Both of our sons were best friends. After telling me about their party plans, Lorna asked if I could make my special cake. I felt obliged, so I made it and dropped it off the morning of their party. Because it was a special gathering, I didn't want to put it in a cheap-looking plastic cake carrier. And as a professional cake maker of sorts, I can absolutely... You put not it in that a this box, is the question, not a plastic cake But carrier. even still, like if Just you're doing it for somebody that you love and like and whatever, absolutely. you are not. You are presenting it as best you And you do. That's right. So I put it on the only other option I had, an ornate, ornate 
cut glass cake stand. What the fuck? Ornate cut glass cake stand? An ornate cut glass cake stand. Wow. I had received as a gift years before. A few days after the party, Lorna and I met for breakfast, and she told me she was sorry. But when her mother was washing the stand, it slipped out of her hands and she broke it. I was crushed because it had been given to me by a special friend. I know accidents happen, but shouldn't they have offered to replace it? Lorna has mentioned that her parents were struggling financially, but she and her husband seem well off. They have a large home and drive expensive cars. If Lorna had offered, I probably wouldn't have taken her up on it. But offering no compensation seemed odd to me. I no longer feel as close to her as before. Am I right to feel this way or should I just let it go? Sweet turned sour. Can you read the title of this question again? A series of unfortunate events puts friendship in question. I would never guess this based on that title. Right. And also, huh? I don't expect them. I would say no if they offered, but they should have offered. Yeah, like it's the principle. Yes, sure. And mind you, this is all happening after the fucking big party that you didn't invite me to, but asked me to make a cake for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the not getting invited to... To me, almost feels like that happened, but it's a separate issue. Well, a series of unfortunate events. Oh, as part of, gotcha. Okay, right. I'm too busy on the cake. (laughs) Right. Because I'm a chef. Because you're making the cake. Thank you. All right. Let's make this about them again. (laughs) Shall I read it over? (laughs) No. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) I no longer feel as close to her as before. Am I right to feel this way or should I just let it go? You felt something as a human being? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? That's, are you right to feel this way? Who says you're wrong? Am I going to tell you? I think it's like, am I being dramatic or, Uh, no? you know what I mean? Am I feeling this way because she didn't invite me to this fucking party but had the nerve to be like, by the way, you can't come, but can you drop a cake off? I maintain the same position. I think the broken cake stand just added insult to injury. Right. To me, you feel how you feel. It doesn't matter what I think, if it's dramatic or not. I think you are trying to ask for permission to feel the way that you feel. Okay. Fucking feel. Do you feel betrayed? Okay, I'm betrayed. Do you feel like someone didn't consider you? Then feel unconsidered. Is that right? Inconsidered? Unconsidered? Feel disregarded. (laughs) Here, here. Right. You're going to feel how you're going to feel. It's up to you how you approach the next steps and how you get yourself out of this feeling. Do you talk to this friend? I think that's kind of probably what they're asking. Like, do I bring this up? Like, hey, can we talk sometime? Or do I just like let it go and just see how things play out? Or am I just being dramatic and like... You know, stuck in my head and things are perfectly fine and normal and I wouldn't have cared about the cake stand had she invited me to the party and it was just. I don't think anything will come from ignoring your feelings and not asking questions. In fact, I feel like that's a good way to build resentment so that the next time that she doesn't invite you to a party because maybe perhaps it's just close family. Maybe. Her son went, I think. Remember their kids are friends yeah i'm sorry then i guess i missed something oh no a family got together yeah so it's close family maybe only she had a family get together for her daughter who was graduating from college i was not invited which surprised me since our families were always close both of our sons were best friends okay and that's okay but it could be i but also there's no such thing as a family get together for you that like i'm just not automatically included in you know what i mean yeah but that's us just the same like there's no family get together that you're included in that i'm not invited you know what i mean like well i think that's what her point is is like it doesn't sound like they are best friends like us though and our families for the record are not close right which 
It's more like their I, I families just, are close. To me, it's like there's like polar dynamics. Like maybe one doesn't necessarily need the other. Yeah, I'm just putting myself in her shoes. Yeah, I would be like, what the fuck? I'm also like... You're I'm, the cake friend. You should... <laughs> but that's the thing. I think that's my problem is that like I've made cakes for events with friends that I've not been invited for, to. Like if I'm invited, with usually... With close friends? Mm, not like no. best oh, friends, Oh, yes. Like, Yes, but that was a weird dynamic. But I honestly, I don't remember the details. I don't know. It's tricky because, like, I can see both sides where it's just like it's literally just like immediate family type of thing mm-hmm. where it's just like it's nobody gonna invite you know what I mean. But mm-hmm. also like we grew up family, together. yeah. Like our families are fucking family. I like, would be interested to know if other family members from the writer's family got invited. Yeah. Because that would make or break this for me. That's true. You know. Um, Although, I think I would always be offended if you <laughs> invite me to a family thing. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's different. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you would. Maybe you wouldn't. That's true. This In this particular instance, I think there are a lot of assumptions being made without af- actually asking questions. If it is just a close family gathering and you are making the cake and you are delivering the cake and doing whatever i think that's separate from hey this family heirloom that's what it was right the cake stand it wasn't a family heirloom no it was i was crushed because it had been given to me by a special friend okay an ornate cut glass cake stand i know (laughs) how could you forget i think that's a different story i think you're i think you want this is gonna flip-flop or be controversial whatever the cake stand is your excuse to approach this person for being upset. Like, I don't feel like being upset about not being invited is enough. So what's my way in? So they want the cake to be the way in, the cake stand to be the way in. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. I saw it differently where it's like, first, you didn't invite me to the party. Now you're not even offering any sort of, can I give you some money for it? Can I... You're the cake maker scorned, and I'm the advice columnist. Where it's like, is this, like, is she just pretty much telling me off? <laughs> Go fuck yourself, we're not friends anymore. Mm-hmm. I think that's you're how I took it. Fair to like, ask. Like, hey. Like, okay, I wasn't invited to the family gathering. Sure. Like, a little bit weird for me, but okay, yep. sure. Here's yep. the cake. I'll still, whatever. I'm happy to be there for you sure. with this. Yep. Didn't bring up anything because it's a big, important day. Now you're telling me your mom smashed my fucking glass, ornate cut glass cake stand. And like zero, like, can I give you money for it? Is there like, so I know I can't replace it, but like, you know, can I, something, is there anything? Like, it's just like a, I'm wicked sorry, my mom smashed it. Mm-hmm. Right, thanks for the cake, bye. Right. You know what I mean? Like, am I supposed to be... Are you trying to tell me something without telling me something? Like, that's how I feel like where she's at. Good, because that's the response to that friend that I think I would give. Like, sure, didn't go to the family gathering. Not a huge deal. But like, now you're of... not even being considerate. Because, like, had you been like, I'm like, I know that was, I don't, I don't know if that's something I can go replace. But, like, do you want money for it? Like, mm-hmm. no, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. But, like, there was no consideration at all right so i think this question this whole conversation that you just had with me in your head (laughs) yeah right is actually the conversation that you have because i think that you've made a lot of assumptions by saying that they're well off that a b c d like there was a lot you know her parents aren't well off but they are yeah this this and that but she even said like even if she did mm -hmm. try to pay me for it i wouldn't have accepted anything it's just more the principle right which is why which is a big deal i would i would actually talk about it with this friend are you wrong for feeling this way no but you might have the power to change where this goes by trying to understand their position more are they well off enough that they would have invited more than just their close family and maybe they didn't even think to replace this thing because they thought you guys were so close. Like there are conversations to be had. That wouldn't exist for you. No, not for me. But I'm not. Even if it was else. like a four dollar Walmart am plastic an tray. 
you oh, would I be... would have already replaced it with a forty million dollar Macy's tray. That's what I mean. But it's me. Like if I that's put these common ex- courtesy. If I put these like, expectations on I... other people, I never that's... would be as great as I am. Yes, but that's common <laughs> courtesy. That's just like you know what I mean. Yeah, that's okay. But are you gonna be mad about it because you want to be, or are you gonna ask questions about it? How do I ask that question? Okay, then you want to be mad. Something that like no. No, I'm mm-hmm. just confused. Mm-hmm. How do I respond to this? Are you being an asshole? Or are you just not even processing that, mm-hmm. like, you didn't even try to? I think you're responding to you know what, I mean? what I think could be the possibilities to the answers. Because what I'm saying is, ask the fucking question. How do I ask that question? You asked it are to me just now. Are you being an asshole? No. You don't ask, are you being the asshole? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You didn't even offer to, how do I, that sounds like I'm a petty, you know what I mean? Like you didn't even offer to replace my dish. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have let you, Mm -hmm. but you didn't even offer. Like how do I. The response that you gave me that sounded like you were like internally struggling. Like first you didn't invite me to the thing with, okay, maybe. But now like there's something broken of mine and you didn't offer to replace it. And I'm really, I don't know what to feel or whatever. Right. That's literally the conversation I would have with you. Yeah. And I think what you're saying is in response to like what my examples might be as to the reason. And all we can do is speculate. We don't know. There might be a perfectly valid one or there might be like, holy shit, I'm a fucking asshole. I didn't offer to replace it. Sorry. I like was thinking about it or the checks in the mail or (laughs) you know what I mean? I've been on Amazon trying to find the same thing. Like trying to surprise you. Like, I don't know. I don't fucking care. Yeah. To me, it's more of like, how are you approaching the situation? If you're just going to sit there and be like, I'm mad. I don't really feel close to you because blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell you. Well then great. You made a choice. Live with it. Mm. You also can make the choice to approach the situation tactfully. Mm. Asshole. I agree. It's just like, (laughs) I know. Do it's I hard to separate. Do I bringing this up? Mm-hmm. Oh, I would bring it up. Because then things could be awkward. Mm-hmm. And then how do I mention bringing up the broken dish that I don't want them to replace? Mm-hmm. I just wanted them to... Care about me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I think that's also like recognizing where it comes from too. Like, I don't want them to replace it. Maybe it's principle, but right now, the way I read it, it's more like I'm hurt that they didn't invite me. And on top of it, something else happened and they haven't considered me again. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is it me or is it them? And what can I do? What's that look on your face? The response. Oh, you read it already? I just started to. Okay, go ahead. Dear sweet, Lorna may have money, but she apparently lacks class. (laughs) She should have offered to replace the cake stand her mother broke. Of course, you could ask her to replace it, but even if she did, it wouldn't have the sentimental value of the one that was lost. In light of your long friendship and now realizing Lorna has feet of clay, I suggest you let this go if you can. But in the future, if she asks again, think twice before putting on your apron. I very rarely disagree with that. What is feet of clay? Feats of clay is actually um, a saying. No shit. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> According to Google, it is an idiom that refers to a weakness or character flaw, especially in people of prominence and power. Mm. So Abby went literal. Lorna may have money, but right. she apparently lacks class. Mm-hmm. I don't. I very rarely disagree with Abby because I think that that was like a very fix it response. Like, not fix it, but like... Like jumping to conclusions. Not just that, but it's just like, there's a quick fix for it. Let's put all the blame on her, but let's choose whether or not we're going to stay mad at her. Mm. It felt too easy. I suggest you let this go if you can. Yeah, this is a little bit controversial for me. I'm one, but you know this about me too. Like, I talk about my problems and I suggest other people talk about their issues. I'm kind of torn with the, like... There's no, there's very few, she should have in any way, shape, or form offered to, how can I replace this? Right. Like, that's just an I immediate, agree. especially as a friend. It's like, even if it was like a, I don't know if it was expensive or not, like, mm-hmm. I don't really have money right now, but like, I would love to 
make it any, up to you. Yeah, like anything. I agree. Like even if you just want to give me a little bit of time, mm-hmm. just some sort of acknowledgement mm-hmm. other than my mom broke your dish when she was washing the dishes. Yep. Okay, bye. And that's putting Thanks aside, again. you know, whether or not the friend knows that this meant something to you. That's right. just like common courtesy on a decent level. And to me, it's like, I have been in situations where I've been like, oh my God, I can't believe I was so inconsiderate. Where I'm like, right. talk to this friend. Me too. Because they might not even be there. There might be something going on you don't know uh, about. hundred percent. And I'm the queen of like, oh, fucking A, man. Like I, I didn't even. I know. And if I didn't <laughs> like, do it, you'd be like, Bip, seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But like, I think that's maybe why I feel more so the way I do because there's nothing there's no situation that I could be in and I'm the queen of oh my god oh I see what you're saying and there's like zero chance that I would have not in any way shape or form been like you know I can't fucking afford crystal but like I'll get you what I can like or just I'll throw you a couple bucks now and give you some more later like I don't know how I can Mm -hmm. or just how can I make this up yeah like I don't yeah I see where you're coming from I I get it and but again, like there have been instances where I've been like, I can't believe I didn't even consider this not that. very not that. But to me, there are some things where I'm just like, whoa, this is like a common sense thing. There have been instances like that in my entire life because there are other things going on. I don't think keeping it quiet is going to solve anything. And I also don't think that you letting this one go and see what happens next is going to you're going to be expecting something you're going to, be to happen waiting next. for the next thing so you can then say like yep. uh yep see there's my confirmation first you didn't invite me to the party then you broke my glass without trying to replace mm-hmm. it and now you're doing this yep and then you find because out because if you're always looking you'll always yep. find yeah you find out down the road that you know none of this happened because xyz husband lost his job or wife lost their job and we don't have the income that we have and or something more devastating happening in mm-hmm. their life or Ask questions, people. Talk about your feelings. Yeah, that's why I'm torn because I'm with you. But I'm also like, there's very little things to like not. I'm with you there. You know, especially because I'm telling you what happened. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that my mom broke your glass. Right. So like, yes, whether you're distracted, you have other things going on. I'm still. Yeah. It's not like I just never returned your glass. And then you asked me about it two weeks later. And I was like, oh, my fucking God, my mom smashed it. I meant to call you or I was I was gonna look online first to see if I could replace it and then I just complete like you know what I mean right it was like I'm telling you my mom broke your plate mm-hmm. all right catch you later right so yeah. that's why I'm like because I'm with you where it's like there's been a hundred things in my life where I'm like oh, I'm fucking so suck. oblivious yeah I'm like I'm fucking sorry I'm an asshole but I just that specific situation I you can't disconnect from to me the only thing I can say is I can't expect other people to be like me. Yeah, I'm with you. And that's the only thing that keeps me in contact with people I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate myself. <laughs> Next? <laughs> yes. Oh, God, yes. Well, this will be so much better. Okay, great. May 10th, mm-hmm. 2024. Oh, last week. Really? Uh, today's the 26th, two weeks ago. Yeah. Sorry, they're getting this episode like either two weeks later or three weeks later, depending on how long it's been since that episode we didn't post, and we're so sorry. Well, if there are uh, avid listeners, mm-hmm. they don't give a fuck. They're not going to know what day it is or how long it's been. So right, <laughs> right. That's the problem with alcoholism. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, they're not drunk. No. Okay, just checking. I mean, sometimes, but like, no. <laughs> they're not here for the wine recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even hear them. They're just like... <laughs> Ketamine. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll start here. <laughs> Father tells daughter she shares blame for divorce. Oh, no. Mm. <gasps> Let a dad tell me that I fucking contributed to his split from his wife. Mm. First, you couldn't be a dad. Now you couldn't even be a husband, and that's my fault, daddy. Maybe you should have left the closet (laughs) decades ago. (laughs) Dear Abby, I am the 18-year-old daughter, 
and third child of parents who are going through a divorce after being together for 36 years. Third child? Third child. Okay. I need your insight on this because I am unsure. My father has always craved physical love and affection, whereas my mom is more like a cat who prefers separation and independence. Oh. Even with these differences, things used to be good between them. That was until mom decided she wanted to stop having sex due to her age and no longer enjoyed it. Parentheses. She also quit drinking, which he didn't like. My father was very upset with this and claimed it was abuse if she didn't make love to him since, quote unquote, that's how people show love. He also stated she should, quote unquote, be more fun by drinking with him. Mom tried to keep the family at peace and be the person he wanted her to be for a few years, but finally decided she could no longer do it. He moved on very quickly. My father is already with another woman, even though he and my mom aren't even officially divorced yet. I've always taken my mom's side, but this has caused my relationship with my dad to dwindle significantly. He claims I am part of the reason the divorce is happening since I quote-unquote Make her feel like what she's doing is okay. Should I see his perspective as well? Teen of divorce in California. Well, this is worse than I expected. I wanted this to be a little bit comical. But if we're just going to fucking hit serious town, Mm -hmm. there are very few instances where I get to sing this with absolute certainty. Go. Is that your cue? Go. I just never know what those nails, was, if you're trying to cut me or if you're mm. trying to tell me to go. Oh, you know the difference. I, no. Anyone in this world knows the difference, that's you. Oh. <clears throat> Drop please, a beat, will you? Please, for real sing. What's a narcissist? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see that coming. Oh, my God. How? I don't know. I've only sang it one other time, I think, on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the podcast. But this but was... But not in... No, no, no in other time life. in my life. No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see Narcissist? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, really? What did you see? Well, when she started talking about mom quit drinking, he didn't like that. Mm-hmm. It was... Clear as day. That, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Now this... Yeah. We're done now. I'm done now. <laughs> but you're 18 and in it, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want a relationship with your dad? Fine create some boundaries but now you know why your mom left if you're listening to this episode think when we're 18 where our brain's not there oh mm, oh, oh mm. yeah i knew where my brain was at 18 the fuck if i did right but you were perpetually under the influence exactly think <laughs> of where we were when we were 18. no not we me <laughs> i'm we thinking were about friends me. at 18 right but i wasn't you <laughs> I drank tequila and fucking wrote journals. You wouldn't touch tequila. I still don't. Because floor. (laughs) (laughs) Because gross. I'm just saying we're not processing how toxic dad is, first of all. Second Mm -hmm. of all, it's dad. Even if we did know he was toxic, it's not. Yeah. We're babies. Oh, yeah. We want to be with our parents. We want to love our parents and have them love us. Should I see his perspective as well? No, this is conditional. What you should do as a an 18-year-old is understand that what happened between your parents has happened. And if he's blaming you, he's absolutely unwilling to accept responsibility. Our children, you as a child, are never, ever, it's never, even if you are, <laughs> let's say you like fucking set your parents up for divorce, like reverse parent trap. <sighs> It is never okay for your parents to put that on you. They had you because they felt they were responsible enough to have sex. So I think you're like, get the fuck out of here. You're not a factor. It's hard to separate that, especially when a parent tells you that. But the parent that does tell you that is trying to exhibit some sort of control. That grandiosity is your first fucking sign. It's your first sign. And... The fact that she stopped drinking and he didn't like it was, hey, her inhibitions are constantly at 10, not one. 
Right. I no longer she's, have control over her. Exactly. She's she's not easily manipulated she's, right now. Right. She's on her way out yep. of my webs. Yep. I honestly think that love your parents. Tread with your dad. You will never win with your dad. If he said that to you, you will never win with your dad. You may love him. You need to set boundaries with him. He's not going to like it. And that'll actually ultimately show you what your relationship is going to be with him in the long run. You know, it breaks my heart. Mom tried to keep the family at peace and be the person he wanted her to be for a few years, but finally decided she could no longer do it. Mom's like, this is my family. I have kids. You know, I'm doing this for the kids. And the kids are literally sitting there watching mom suffer. Mm Mm-hmm. Knowing, mom, why are you still here? Constantly feeling like, like I'm watching, I can adjust myself. I am just, I wouldn't be surprised if mom was like, This is me, this is me, I'm the problem. Let me fix me so that I can keep my family together until it, she realized she wasn't, until it, she realized it wasn't her. No, it's just like we get stuck on, like, but I want to get my kids a home and I don't want to break up the family and what if me divorcing the dad causes trauma and now my kids are going to be all fucked up because divorce is devastating for children meanwhile they're literally watching going like mom what are you doing yeah that could be a total possibility like that's what she's saying like I my mom trying to keep the family for years Mm -hmm. (laughs) until she just couldn't do it no more yeah you know what I mean? I, I think that's a, all a part of it. That's devastating. I'm just saying, like, this is also a part, like, if mom thought that she was the problem in this relationship because she was conditioned to be the problem, so she tried to hold the family together by trying to work on herself. Like, there's there's nothing fair about any of this situation. It doesn't matter where you are as the person who is receiving the abuse. Is that right? Receiving the abuse? I feel like it's some sort of like, hey, swipe your card here if you want to receive abuse. The way that I said it, not... It didn't am I clear? Come out that way. No. It did not come out that way. No, it didn't? No. Okay. <laughs> How did it come out precisely? Personally, the right way? Yeah. Okay. It didn't... It wasn't like a, what the fuck did you just say? Like, I didn't buy this. <laughs> okay, like, great. This isn't the ornate cake... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I feel so wrong <laughs> laughing about this, but you get it. Thank you. I, I understand. Eighteen, eighteen. That's all you have to say. But you're in a position where you, as the third child, as the third child, if you're the reason and the other ones aren't, I was gonna say you don't exist. So right. you you can do no wrong okay, as who? the What's last your, baby. Your, do you have a middle name? Right. I don't know. I don't know. The exact question one more time. If I was taking my mom's side, but this has caused my relationship with my dad to dwindle significantly. He claims I'm part of the reason the divorce is happening since I make her feel that she's what she's doing is okay. Should I see his perspective as well? No, no, you shouldn't. It's not about perspective. It's about what's right for that being in that time. And that was right for your mom. And what would be right for your dad is what's right for your mom. If he actually gave a shit about her, not putting blame on you for letting this relationship go. You can support both of your parents and not be the reason for their divorce. What it feels like for me a little bit is like she's watched. She's aware that her dad's not in a good, healthy place. Mm -hmm. And a lot of his ways are toxic. So I, I think what I felt reading this was like, I know that my dad's, I don't want to say not good. Because that's Mm -hmm. harsh for a child. It's hard. I'm just, never mind. But yes. I know that like my dad's hasn't been the greatest. Mm -hmm. But it's like watching this for so long, it's like, is he really not the greatest? Or is it, you know, like, could my mom have done something differently? But it's like, I know that this isn't okay. Like, I've been watching my mom for years. Like, and I just, like, I'm 18. I know that this isn't okay, but I don't know that this isn't okay. Mm -hmm. So it's been long enough where I'm, like, questioning myself, like, is this actually, you know what I mean? Like, my dad's done and said enough where it's like, is he right? Mm -hmm. Like, is, am I, you know, is my mom wrong and I'm not seeing his perspective? Mm -hmm. That's what, it's just like a confusion where it's like, I know, but it's my dad. 
Yes. So it's like. I'm there. I am there. As a child of yeah. almost probably should have been a divorce, but they never got married because foreign rules. I'm there. Right. What I'm not there with is you're part of the reason because you support your mom. For sure. I'm that's with you. That's where I'm not. And that's where I'm like, okay. I'm saying she's probably like, she knows that, like mm-hmm. innately knows that. But it's like, what if? What if my dad's right? Mm-hmm. Or what if I, you know, well, what if I, I'm not seeing his I don't side think, and just taking my mom's side? Or, you know what I mean? That's yeah. confusing for a kid. It is. And, and I think what I'm saying parents. is like on our side, it's not our job for the writer to affirm another person's perspective, to inform them that their perspective is correct. For us, it's more about thinking about the responsibility and the psychological position. Maybe dad said that to you out of hurt, or maybe dad is a legit 100% narcissist. Either way. Dad's an alcoholic. Right. Yes. Either way. So a narcissist. Either way, dad's not right. Right. Dad's hurt or that's a narcissist unhealthy and Again, toxic because he's, he's he an alcoholic. will not re- he de- will not take responsibility for his contribution to the end of this mm-hmm. and it sounds like he hasn't right in any shape way or form right so for me it's like yes i understand where you're coming from my job is to let you know that you're not doing anything wrong what you're doing is advocating for both of your parents to be happy and your dad just won't let this shit go. Mm-hmm. And so he's looking for the nearest way to appeal to your conscience and what better way to appeal to my kid's conscience than to tell them it's their problem. Mm. I think that's gross. And Absolutely. I would love to say that it was my dad that did that to us, but it wasn't. We were never blamed for their split, but my mom was the one that used to love to shit talk my dad. And sure, that's where she was. That's where she was at because her life changed drastically. I get it. I'm past that (laughs) personally. But it doesn't change the fact that this dynamic still exists in the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is fair for you to feel like you're in a position to even write this question because your dad said that. And for me to be so definitive with that response and have no internal struggle as an October Libra... (laughs) says to you, I am certain you, you're you not doing anything wrong. And no, do not consider his position because he has not taken responsibility. When he takes responsibility and still says it's your problem, then go to a therapist so they can tell you it's not. But a person's failed relationship is failed because of two people, not because of those on the outside. Yes, especially the kids. Am I being like really wordy about this? Maybe. Really what? Wordy, like too outlandish or maybe like unrealistic. Like I feel kind of strongly about this one. Like do not place your blame on your kids for your failed relationship. Grow some balls, dude. Oh, for sure. But we're talking to the child, not the dad. Right. Well, right. <laughs> I suppose. I'm so mad at him. Me too. <laughs> okay, great. Me too. <laughs> Good. At least we're on the same page there. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of like, how do you talk to a child? You know what I mean? I mean, I, yes, technically honestly, you're an adult, you're 18, but yeah, you're a child. You're, yeah. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, but like, are you going to receive it as an 18 year old that's blaming yourself? Or that's maybe why I'm considering? trying to, how can I say it in a way that's like, I mean, it kind of goes with like, if you're asking, so you know the answer. She knows, mm-hmm. she knows dad's not healthy. Yeah. Still dad. So she's like, what if? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, being in an abusive relationship for years where it's like one day it's like what if he's right i don't i don't fucking know what's right and wrong anymore it's been so fucking chaotic and so fucking i'm just so lost and confused for so long and like i know what i feel and i know what i see and like i watch my mom Mm -hmm. you know be measurable in this relationship and i know she's just doing it to keep the family together but dad's always said so much shit about mom that Mm -hmm. like what if he is right? Or, you know, so it's just like I'm trying to, like, my little 18 year old self that's just like confused and lost. And I don't fucking, what, like, what the fuck? I don't fucking know. Like, I love my dad. I know sometimes he's a fucking piece of shit, but like, I love my dad. And, but I love my mom. And, you know, they used to get along great and now they don't anymore. And so maybe dad's right. That maybe mom did. A lot of our perspective, you too, know, because my little 18 year old self was ready to, like, 
condemn my dad. Mm -hmm. My parents did not get along. I was the go-between as the oldest. Yeah. I was the messenger. Yeah. And I got shot every Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Didn't matter which parent it was. Right. So I think that speaks volumes to the different perspectives here. But what you said struck a chord with me and kind of actually changes the question. Did your dad take responsibility to have you asked your dad, dad, what responsibility have you taken to your split with mom? You're not going to ask that. Of course not. You don't even know what that means. That you're very right. You're very right. You don't know what that means. But that's a very important facet for you to be part of the problem means dad took responsibility for the rest of it in a very strange way. So as an 18 year old asking me this question, I would say, I would ask you, well, what responsibility did your dad take before he asked you, before he told you you're part of the problem? If I were sitting there in the therapist chair. That's probably your you, confusion. I'm not a therapist. Because dad was always like, if you loved me, you would have sex with me. Mm-hmm. You used to be fun. Why can't Mm -hmm. you just be fun anymore? So she's probably hearing these things where it's like, no, dad, you're an asshole. Like, Mm -hmm. what the fuck? But also, what if that's true? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's why I would say ask this question, because how else are you supposed to separate your dad from your dad? That's why this is tricky, because he's your dad. Yeah, I just think that's You don't want to. Yeah, I agree. For 18. I agree. Plus, that's not your responsibility. No, it's not. It's, but it's also not your responsibility to take responsibility for your parents' divorce. For sure. So, Which is why this is difficult and confusing yeah. and you're asking yeah. these questions to begin yeah. with. I'm not arguing anything. No, I saying. know. And I'm also not saying that what I'm saying is the answer. I'm just saying like, I think if I'm going to give an 18-year-old a response. simply just be like, mm, no. in no way, shape, or form, did you have any anything to do with this? I would say what you said. But I would yeah. also be like, if your dad hasn't taken responsibility, how can you? I wouldn't even go that far. No? I would just keep it so, like, you're so not responsible in any way. Like, very, like, period. TGIF. Like, just, like, my only concern is you. Okay. And, like, okay. you yep. know. Okay. Like, we don't give a fuck I like about that. it. No my only concern but is it's you. it's just, like. Fuck everything else. Yeah. Even mom. Don't like, even think you. about that shit. Yep. Just focus on, like. I love that. Zero. There's. Even if you tried to, Mm -hmm. you couldn't, you know what I mean? You couldn't be responsible for this. Yeah, I love that. That's a good one. At some point, when she gets older, she's going to see it much more clear. Yep. You know what I mean? So right now, don't, one day you'll know. Dad didn't take responsibility. One day you'll know. I know. I know. I should have actually, wow. (laughs) One day they'll know. Yeah. Well, I have a. I've been there. That's why I should have known. I know that you're. And I have a. <laughs> You've been there as the child. And there as the dad. One day they'll know. Biff, can we have a response on this one? Yeah. Because this is this one's actually breaking my heart a little bit. Dear teen, that your father has dragged you into the marital difficulties between him and your mother is appalling. I believe it is a form of child abuse. Oh. The person whose perspective you should seek and I'm not saying this lightly, is a licensed psychotherapist Mm. to discuss this entire matter. You are not the reason for your parents' divorce. Their basic incompatibility and your father's manipulative nature are the reasons. Please talk to your doctor about a referral now. Is that it? Mm Mm-hmm. Perfect. It's funny because... There was one part you were talking about, and it was like in my brain, like, go to therapy, see a therapist. But I didn't want to cut you off. Well, there's a part where I thought I said, go to therapy, see a therapist. But I actually don't remember saying it out loud. I don't think you did. So that's great. Perfect. That is a perfect response. And also, I never thought, so Abby might be the first, to give such explicit instructions. Go to therapy fucking right now. Because you need to know this isn't your fucking problem. And there's a lot more right. for you to be concerned about then. Wow. That, okay, so the last one you made up for it, Abby. Because <laughs> this was brilliant. That was perfect. I never would have, I never would have been like, stop, go now. You know what I mean? I would have been like, well, yeah. maybe you should seek therapy. 
Yeah, well, because I, he, I'm not going to therapy. I don't care who tells me to right. stop and go now. Mm-hmm. I suppose, yeah. Good questions, Beth. Are you focusing on the bloody murder being screamed outside your window? Yeah, I'm like, should I even bother talking? Because you're going to have to fucking cut it all out. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. Like, kids ruin everything uh, unless they're your uh, own. Uh, mm. I know. And we thought we had to censor our burps. Next time we should just leave them in and see which one wins. The kids screaming our, <laughs> our burps. It would be a good battle. It would be. I don't know who would win. It'd be celebrity death match yes. for our burps and the kids screaming. <laughs> well, you know, you made it through. Congratulations. We made it through. We made it. I was talking to the listeners. I know. Oh, okay. We I was made talking it about through. us. Congratulate us. <laughs> Did it work? Congratulate us. It worked? It was just like a... It's Latin for congratulate, congratulate us. us. And I was like, well, wait. <laughs> yes, we made it. Motherfuckers. I'm just I saying love. I need a therapy session after these questions. You there was a couple... seek one. Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying triggers, but there was a couple like, motherfucker. I know. I know. Like, how dare you ask these questions when... I'm over here suffering. You don't know we're going to listen to them. With my baby dad. For my kid, when she's like, Mom, why are you here? <laughs> the <laughs> whole funny. time. I'm over here suffering from my baby mom. Which is funny. When my kid's because... like, my mom has nuggets. <laughs> nuggets? Yeah. Chicken nuggets. I was going to say, wait a minute. I'm like, you, Dad, you're making healthy food? You didn't get together because she no. didn't have nuggets. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I know. You're, you're such an asshole. <laughs> wow. <sighs> I think it's more. You can close this on your own. Oh, good because I got more to say. What is? It's like surprise. even worse. <laughs> Cause like when my parents sat us down to be like, we've been thinking about this for a long time. This is none of your kids' fault. We love you all so mm-hmm. much, but we're getting a divorce. Every single one of us children were like, "Fucking a! Why did you wait this long?" Right. Yeah, as a mom to a little girl. Mm-hmm. With a man that I am not going to grow up and marry, mm-hmm. it's still like, no, I need to do everything I can, you know, to keep my family together before, you know, just so I can say, well, I tried everything I could. Right. Which I totally appreciate as the child of parents who didn't think this would impact us. So didn't talk to us because we were so young. Mm-hmm. Well, I was 16. <laughs> and I was four or five. And our parents split. Yeah. So like they didn't talk to us thinking like they're young enough. They'll they'll make it. And for us it was like, sure. Okay, fine. Don't talk to us. And but then, what the fuck's happening? Right. And then for me it was like, you're the dad now. Right. And that wasn't fair. Right. But it didn't impact us. It's fine. We don't need to be talked to. It's fucking bizarre because I'm just like. Mm-hmm. That face is how I feel. We literally asked my parents, like, why didn't you guys do this a long time ago? Mm-hmm. Like, you put more damage and trauma in our more lives. More stress on us. Daily. Not divorcing right. than you fucking ever would have right. separating. But yet here I am, like. The power of Jesus. I can't. I can't break up my daughter's family. Mm-hmm. They'll devastate her. Right. But my kid's going to be like, mom, what the fuck is wrong with you? Right. It's such a weird dynamic. That's so annoying. Whatever. We all need therapy. Send us your dynamics and what you're avoiding therapy over. <laughs> Please do. And then Send us drink what you're drinking me. while you're <laughs> yes, <laughs> contemplating what I should be therapized over. Oh, that's funny. Instead right? of therapy for this situation, this is what How I drink. About, <laughs> How about Try a Bloody it. Mary? <laughs> a dirty martini for my dad's a weenie. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. For my dad's a weenie. Okay, yeah. not yeah. for my dad's weenie. No, 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 no. I... Hey guys, <laughs> do you have a best friend you want to put on the market? Make her a missed connection on Craigslist. Isn't that like I'm trying to find you? I'm trying to sell you. Right. A missed connection though is like they're trying to find you. I'm trying to sell you. This is the woman you're talking about. I don't care if you didn't meet her at a gas station. I'm going to pretend she was there. And also, <laughs> she's fucking crazy. So take your chances. But $5 million or I kill her. <laughs> Great. Then you're like, what the fuck? This isn't even the chick I was talking about. Bye. Good luck. 
<laughs> she doesn't even fucking live in this See region. See you on Nightline. <laughs> And that's that it. That was the asshole who tried to sell me his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> he killed her anyways. The fuck? Oh my god. That's it. That's it. So, you know, you're beautiful, you're wonderful. Eat the cake anyway. Yeah, because never said not to. And who's ever heard of a daddy with wife issues? And thank you for listening. You've been ill advised. Does that work? Yeah. I don't even fucking It was a good one. I was gonna say daughter issues. But that sounds like there needs to be a civil court case involved. With Maury? No, I'm pretty sure he's the father. <laughs> oh, of whose baby? I don't know. Fucking <laughs> Let's not go there. Ill Advised is hosted and produced by Stephanie and Ray. A.K.A. your best. Send us your questions, your comments, all of your concerns. And your drink recommendations. To illadvisedpodcast at gmail.com. You can catch up on all of our episodes and our show notes at illadvisedthepodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at illadvisedthepodcast. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. You've You've been been ill-advised.